the gas mileage. I'm averaging between 16 to 20 miles per gallon on this car. When I had my VF engineering tune and the supercharger, it was less. Regardless, when you live in California, this is cheap right now. 353 for 91 octane. We don't even have 93. Main struggle of owning this car would be filling up. I used to fill up every three days, but now it's every, every couple of days. So gas prices is rough, but that's how it goes with these cars. One thing you get pretty used to when you buy this car is you're at the gas station pretty often, but it's not miles per gallon, it's cheesy, but every time I post a gas station picture, it's always like smiles per gallon, which is pretty true. Now that I'm full, my last tank of gas right there got me 202 miles for the full tank. So I usually reset it every time and the computer says I have 273 miles to go, and I'm currently averaging 18.8 .8 miles per gallon, which is pretty high. Uh, I've been driving pretty conservative lately, so that may be the exact reason why. Now, the one thing you may never think about is, now that the car is full, it is so heavy. You can feel how heavy it is, and every speed bump. The car is extremely heavy. Dang, man. Another beautiful day in Newport Beach. I'd love to be out there on the water right now. But I'm here filming a review on my M3, which I'm completely fine with. So one of the biggest issues about living in Orange County or California in general, city of Newport Beach, over here in Newport Coast, they have these signs everywhere. Loud vehicles will be sighted. That's probably where my car falls into play. For years and I was in the car. Now I've been pulled over multiple times for having too loud of a car. I've even been state ref. But around here on PCH, all they do is they sit and they give tickets to people for too loud of cars. That's one issue with this is that this car can be super loud with certain exhaust setups on it. And uh, I want my car somewhat loud, not too loud, but even like stock Aventadors are getting sighted uh, in Newport Beach. So anytime I come through Newport Beach or like Corona Del Mar, I have a Valvetronic system so I can close it. But when you open it, you're pushing your luck in California because you can either get a state ref, get a ticket, get fined for it, and sometimes actually get impounded. So that's one thing about this car is that you want it to be loud, but when you live in California, it kind of sucks. But to be honest, like I said, it's what you have to pay for when you buy a car like this. You have to expect things like this to pop up. California is a little bit touchy. But I don't know. That's just how life goes sometimes. Oh, uh, pushing my luck. I don't like making videos on things I don't like or like negative things, but with this car, I've had two E90 XM3s. I had an E90 for two and a half years, and I've had this car for over a year now. Of course, when you start doing mods and you start driving the car harder, and I've driven the car to Florida and back, there's certain things that you're gonna fall in love with, and there's certain things that you're gonna hate or you're gonna dislike. I've already gone over a couple in this video, but there's obviously a couple more things that are pretty popular on Facebook groups and also the forums. I've had a couple people ask me to make videos talking about what I like and what I dislike and also E90 versus E92 which I'll make that in the future but this video is just strictly stuff that I don't like um, like I said I don't like making this stuff but there's things you're not gonna like on a car that you buy that's just how it goes sometimes the first things would be the cup holders um, they're not good one closest to the driver's side always gets stuck and you always have to slam it or push it or wait for the temperature to change in the car and when it's warmer it'll come out it's like there's so many issues with those two cup holders that you get frustrated so most of the time I'll just end up leaving the cup holder open um, if I have coffee or like an energy drink or something like that but the cup holders tend to stick a lot in these cars not just the E92 my E90 as well so when I bought this car it was on stock suspension and it wasn't lowered at all so I had plenty of clearance but one of the most popular things that you can do to these cars would be the GT4 front lip which is what all the race cars run or like the cars over in Germany at the Nürburgring all those guys run the GT4 front lip 
and also coilovers. You want to be able to have adjustments for camber and adjustments for height and everything else in between. So I have coilovers on this car plus a GT4 front lip and uh, it's really low. So my office has a really strange entrance where on the right hand side of my office, I actually can't park there anymore because it's so busy um, and there's only four spots that I can fit into. The other ones, when I try to back into it, my front lip just scrapes on it. So when I go in, I usually go to the left at an angle or to the right and then ease my way in. And when I leave every day, I think I three wheel pretty much every time I go over a bump like that. So that's just, that's the other thing is having the car so low. I love how it looks and it performs, but when you daily drive it, it's not the easiest to deal with, but you do get used to it. So going on to like the most popular thing with these cars that everyone talks about would be the rod bearings. Now moving on to the maintenance cost, that's one thing that does suck. I know like the cup holders and the gas mileage and how low it is, that's all an inconvenience that it's not that big of a deal, but when it comes down to your maintenance, you have to take care of these cars. I had done the rod bearings in this car, also in my E90. My E90 had the BE bearings, this car has the ACL bearings, which they don't really make a difference. They've both been in the game for a long time. One is just on back order much longer than the other one. When you start getting into the rod bearings, you also have to replace the motor mounts. And then the other part of the maintenance cost, which would be all the maintenance issues that these cars have. If I can remember, rod bearings, motor mounts, throttle actuators, fuel breather valve, idle control valve. But yes, the rod bearings, it's not a myth, it's real. You look at rod bearings being replaced on every E90X, on every shop's Instagram page all the time. It's very popular and that's something you have to do. Cost is like 2,500 to 4,000, depending on where you live, East Coast, West Coast. And when you do it, make sure you get a really good shop to do it because you do not want to mess around with rod bearings. If you do something bad, it can be catastrophic and you can completely destroy your engine, which is the exact point of why you do rod bearings to avoid just that. Now, I posted about this in the Facebook group that I belong to called E90X M3 Owners in the USA and I got a lot of heat for it, but it's true. I think these cars are slow for what they are. You pay for a lot of car, you get a lot of car for the money. But the problem is with these naturally aspirated engines, it's a four liter V8, factory says 420 horsepower, but the torque is on the low end. So you get all this muscle sound, this American German muscle V8 sound, as you guys have heard from all these cars and all the exhaust setups you can do, but the car lacks a lot of torque. So when you put your foot to the floor, I remember the first time I drove one, I was super surprised at how slow it was for what I thought it would be. Now being a V8, you think you could get a lot of power. You can, but it requires a supercharger or building the engine, which usually kits start at $30,000 just to build a stroker kit. So if you've seen my videos before on feature films of supercharged cars, usually you can get a good kit for six to 10 grand and make about 600 horsepower. So if you want power, supercharger is the way to go. The good thing is it's very rewarding when you hear this engine at full throttle. With this Plenum 2 from Eventury, the cabin noise is absolutely beautiful. And the sound the car makes in general, it's intoxicating. So it's not so much about straight line speed. Once you get this thing in the corners, that's where it shines. And that's what makes me the happiest to be an owner of this car. One of the other things that really bugs me is I had a manual car in my E90, which was really fun. It was really, really engaging. You felt very connected to the car. This car is a DCT, which is dual clutch transmission. Now with these cars, without a tune or transmission tune, the DCT gearbox is very clunky. So from first into reverse or back, or from a standstill from first to going, it tends to take a little bit of time, almost like it's trying to engage like a manual clutch. I am doing a GTS transmission flash and an engine tune in a different video coming up soon. Just listen here very briefly. I'll keep the exhaust closed. Listen to the transmission trying to engage. It's not the best, but once you're out of first, it's pretty good. Actually, I take that back. It's awesome. The door handle. Anytime you go to a car wash and you clean it yourself and you have your key in your pocket, it will lock the door. 
and unlock. So when you're spraying the side of the car, the alarm will go on and then go off, go on and go off. Whenever it has pressure from the water, it locks the car. So it's a little bit annoying, um, but that's just me being picky. My key battery is always low too. Every time I get in the car, it says I have a low battery on my key. It's like the second or third battery I've had to replace since I own the car. I don't know if you guys knew this, but fold down seats, that's an option. So some cars don't have fold down seats in the rear. Mine came with it on the E90 and the E92, but apparently fold down seats, that was an option. I don't know if I, uh, just make them fold down for every car. I don't understand that. So this is something that I had learned as I got into a DCT car. These cars have a rear drive shaft issue where the center support bearing tends to go out. Hold on. That is a 747 Boeing Southwest airplane. It's blue, it's red and yellow. I don't know planes, I made that up. These cars have a center support bearing issue. If you watch my video on how to fix the cowbell noise. That's what I was experiencing for the first year of having this car. In first gear, it, going into an engagement where you're actually taking off, there'd be this clunk and it sounded like a cowbell. And what happens is your CV joint that holds your drive shaft actually has a lot of play in it and it starts hitting against itself. So if you watch that video, you can see how we replaced it. When I replaced it, it got rid of the noise completely and it even made it better for the DCT transmission. So when I go from a standstill, it's much better than what it was. The video you just saw of me backing up and going forward and backwards, it's like 40% better now than what it was when I had the CV joint replaced. Faded side markers. These have condensation in them a little bit. You can see, maybe not on the camera. This camera makes everything look good, but this has like a haze to it. I think water got into it and these are um, fading. So I just got new ones today. I'm actually about to go pick them up, but these are pretty faded. And then over on my passenger side mirror, it has an auto dimming feature and it looks like my mirror is burnt. It may be a little bit hard to see it in the video. Anytime it gets dark outside, anytime that I'm in like a parking garage like this, the dimmer looks like it's burnt. It's like an orange color, so I have to replace that. I never had it on any other cars, but this one, for some reason, it looks like it's burnt. I had orange reflectors before. I wrapped them black. I didn't like the orange reflectors, so I replaced it. This car is a 2011 E92 competition, and it came with a carbon roof. Now, this is a wrap. This is a gloss carbon fiber wrap that I had put on because underneath this, it's yellowing. I don't, actually I do. I'll insert a picture right here. It's yellowing underneath and you can see how bad it is. So I covered it, but you can apparently take off, you can strip the clear coat and you can refinish it, which a lot of shops do that. So I do have plans to do that very soon at some point for a video for you guys. So with my E90 and my E92, for some odd reason, I don't know why it happens, but I think it's because I have my hand here so much. The left side of the steering wheel tends to peel and I don't know what material this is, but around the controls on the steering wheel, it starts to peel off and it almost looks like a, a sunburn or like it, after you get sunburn, it peels off and it's happening on the right side too. These wheels get very oily and they soak in a lot of like moisture from your hands and it's pretty gross. So I recommend doing like a brush cleaning, but you have to be careful because this vinyl or whatever this is, it comes off very easily. Now, if you haven't met me in person, I'm 6'2 and I'm a big dude. I tend to take up a lot of space and with the stock seats in here, the roll cage actually pushed them forward. So I do have aftermarket seats in here from Cobra. These are made for bigger people. They're much wider. Any pole position or Sparco or Recaro, I'm just kind of, I'm pushed in. With these, I can actually sit back and relax. My friend Brett Slicer sold me these and they've been perfect. The material is breathable and I like it a lot, but this is a video for negative, so I don't know why I'm talking about that or all the bad things. I keep, it's hard to talk bad. I wanna talk about the good things, but that's a different video. The driving position's not good. I don't really like it. You sit so high. In the factory seats, if you sit up straight all the way. So this is me literally sitting up 100% as straight as I can. Now the problem is, is that I have sliders on this car and I don't like them. They sit way too high. I know Mach Chanel makes low profile, which I'm going to do. So I'm 6'2", 6'3", on a good day. I'm at the, the headliner. So what I do when I drive is I do this. I always scoot down more 
and it puts me in a more comfortable position where I'm a little bit more eye level with the dashboard. But what I'd like to do is recline more and sit down further. But the stock seats, you sit so high. You put them as low as you can. This happened in my E90 and this car, and you, you're just too high up. It doesn't feel comfortable. You feel like you're driving like a school bus. Driving position is not good in these cars. It's okay. I've been in worse, like Diablos, Murcielago, Dodge Vipers. Those are probably the worst driving positions I've ever felt. It's probably a Dodge Viper, but this is not that good. I don't know if you can see them, but anytime you put your seatbelt on, there's a silver thing right here that pushes the seatbelt, so it goes right here. It doesn't work with aftermarket seats, but with your OEM seats, it usually does. It's right here, and it'll grab your seatbelt for you and push it to right here. I've never had it work. I had it on for the first half a year of ownership, and I coded it out because it would just, it wouldn't work. It would just hand me the lever. It wouldn't hand me the seatbelt. So the seatbelt extender, pointless. It doesn't, it doesn't work. All I want to know is, what is that noise? I don't understand. I don't get it. So when I started doing some more feature films, I noticed that a lot of people that I would meet up with, they would go, oh wait, are you supercharged? I'm not supercharged. There's a weird high pitched sound that I hear in my car all the time. And it's usually just at idle or in first gear and driving. Sometimes when I drive a little bit harder, I can hear it, but it gets drowned out by my exhaust. The weird thing is I took it to Precision Dynamics, my shop, and we replaced the pulley, the tensioner, and a couple other components, as well as a vacuum line and it's still making that noise. I don't know what it is. Okay, so if I missed anything, let me know below in the comments. I wanna hear what you don't like about the E92 M3. Now, I can make a video, and I will make a video that of explaining everything I love about this car because it was kinda of hard to dig for stuff I didn't like. It was more of just like the things that break or the common issues that these cars have just to make video content. The car's not that bad. I absolutely love this car. It's worth every penny, every second of my time, and I can't get enough of it. This car has made me so happy, made me so many friends, and I'm very thankful for the awesome community. I just wanted to say thank you to anyone who has reached out to me saying thank you to me in regards to making content for the E90X community. That's what I love right now. I enjoy this. It's a fun platform. The car is amazing. Uh, I have so much more planned for it. Yeah, just a big thank you to everyone for the support. So if you can, thumbs up the video, comment below what else you don't like about the M3 and what I missed. If you can, hit the subscribe button. Thank you again. I'll see you next time. Peace.